In this video, I'll be talking about functions of two and three variables. And the most important ideas here are just establishing basic definitions like domain of a function. And even more importantly, we'll be looking at the idea of contour plots, which is uh, the same thing as a topographical map, if you're familiar with that. All right, so a function of two or three variables is just a way of assigning either ordered pairs to, to a real number or a way of assigning um, an ordered triple to a real number. And we usually use uh, formulas to define such functions, so for example, I could write down a function of two variables. This way, I could have x cubed plus 2x squared y minus 7y squared plus 2. So that's an example of a polynomial of two variables. And I, could, I can write down a function of three variables using a formula. And that's mostly what we'll be doing So that's an example of that. Uh, one thing that's different when you move from one variable to two and three variables is your the domains become more complicated. So instead of having a domain being maybe just some intervals, now we have to worry about domains of functions uh, being regions in the plane or uh, a region in space, which is even more difficult to draw. Um, For example, if I write down a function with a formula like this, well, the domain is all of the pairs x, y for which this is defined. So domain is x, y for which for which this makes sense. And so for this to make sense, we have to worry about taking, uh, you know, we can't take a square root of a negative number, and we can't divide by 0. So in this case, we have to make sure that uh, the stuff under the square root and in the denominator, we have to make sure it's positive. Uh, in other words, we have to make sure 1 is greater than uh, x squared plus y squared. And the region this defines is, is the unit disk. And by that, I mean all of the points inside the unit circle. And, uh, but this is very similar to one variable. You just have to make sure that all of the things you write down make sense, and the domain is is typically just the values for which it does. Most of the functions we'll be using will be formed using polynomials and exponentials and sines and cosines. And there, there's no problem. You know, the domain of something like this, the domain of this function is the entire plane, which we write as R2. Now I'd like to talk about our way for visualizing functions of, of two variables, and these are contour plots. The idea here is, um, well, I should say I'm talking about contour plots and graphs of functions. So if I have a function of two variables, f of x, y, I can think of this as a graph in three dimensions, namely all triples x, y, and z, for which this equation is true. And basically what you're doing here 
if we take our three-dimensional coordinate system, we're taking points on the xy plane below and assigning them to a particular z value. And so that gives us a point x, y, f of x, y. And if you plot a whole bunch of these for some function, you'll typically get some kind of surface. We've already seen some examples. Uh, we've seen the elliptic paraboloid, which looks like this. But now, now let me return to the, what the idea of contour plots is. Uh, this is very similar to our technique for understanding the quadric surfaces. Namely, we, we have a function f of x, y, and we're going to plot a bunch of curves in the plane by, uh, by looking at the curves you get by setting this equal to a constant. So I would see what curve you get when you set uh, f of x, y equal to 1. This corresponds... to some curve. If I draw a picture of just some random function, and I look at, say, height of z equals 1, I'm just looking at intersecting the plane z equals 1 with this surface, and you get a curve, and I would plot that on the xy plane. This looks sort of circular. And then we'd do this, or maybe we'd write down this is, this corresponds to where z equals 1. We could write that on there. Uh, I could look at the curve you get by seeing all points in the xy plane where the function is equal to 2. That corresponds to, to that curve there. So if I draw that here, it's a little inside this one. And you can continue to do this for successive values of z. And, and you get what's called a contour plot. So each line is, corresponds to a place where your function is at a constant value. And this is just like a topographical map, namely a map that tells you what height you're at. So if you're walking around on a mountain, when you, uh, if you're walking around on a mountain, this map will tell you, well, now I'm at height one. If I move further, I get to height two. If I move in here, now I'm at height three, now I'm at height four, and so forth. And that's the idea of a contour plot. Let me do a quick specific example of plotting a contour plot. So if I have this function and I want to do a contour plot of it, well, maybe I'll see what curve I get by setting this equal to 0. I should mention these are called level curves. So this corresponds to y minus 4x squared equals 0. Which is just this parabola y equals 4x squared. So this corresponds to z equals 0. If I look at another level curve, another uh, curve that comes from setting f equal to a constant, say 1, I'll have y minus 4x squared equals 1, or y equals 4x squared plus 1. It's just the same graph shifted up 1. And so this corresponds to a z value of 1. And this, this example is actually pretty simple, because if I do z equals 2, I'll just shift this up again. Or if I did z equals minus 1, it would shift it down.
but this is just a basic illustration of level curves for a specific uh, function. And in class, I'll go through a more complicated example.